Reading is more of a solitary experience. You know, you don't read, it's just you reading a story. So for me, that's where the crowd experience comes in, the book review. I can go online and post my own book review, and then I can see all people who reviewed it before me. I can go back later and see who reviewed it after me. And that's kind of where you get that crowd experience with something like reading that's mostly solitary. <clears throat> reading book reviews can be great reference material. For all of you who haven't written a book review yet, go read some book reviews. I think I wrote my first book review because I read someone else's review and I was like, you know what, I'm going to give this a try. I think I have something I want to say. And so reading book reviews can help you if you're kind of teetering about writing one, it can give you an insight into the kind of book reviewer that you want to be. Now, as a writer, book reviews are important because they are market research. Um, I write in multiple genres, so it's important for me to look at the reviews that are written for books in that similar genre so I can find out the types of things that readers like and don't like. If they don't like it in that book, they're probably not going to like it in my book either. So reading book reviews as a writer is great market research. And it's also a motivation. When I see someone get an amazing review, I aspire to have something like that. So that's why, as a writer, I always make a point to read book reviews. Now, book reviews and critiques are not the same thing, and I don't think people always understand that. So you have something called the consumer versus the critic, and the word professional is silent, because <laughs> anyone in this day and age can write a book review, but it didn't used to be that way. Um, a long time ago, before sites started, you know, making it like actually promoting that, yes, you can review this product or you can review this or that, it was just the professionals who did it. You know, you had restaurant critics who would give their restaurants ratings, and you had publishing, you know, Kirkus reviews who would tell you whether or not this book was good or not good. And that's all fine and dandy, but sometimes you want to know what the people think. I actually, that's one of the main reasons why I've always been a fan of Rotten Tomatoes, because they have their professional critic review here, and then they have like the people's ideas over here. So you get both. Pre-release versus post-post-release. Most of the time, a critique happens before the book reaches the public. So everything that goes into making that book worthwhile once it's released, it's kind of part of the critique process. You can have your book critique multiple times to fix errors and make it ready for the public. But once it's out there, what the consumers are looking at, that's the final product. Same thing with public versus private. Um, a lot of times, if you get a critique, it's a long involved thing. You don't post that online. But a lot of um, companies that do critique offer a um, for critical review that you see sometimes when you look at a book, they have like the editor's notes underneath. Those are, those are critical reviews. And they're very different from consumer reviews. And then ranking versus the board. If you are lucky enough <clears throat> as an author to get a really positive critical review, it usually comes with some kind of seal of approval that you can stick on your book, you know? So that's always great. And um, you don't really get that with consumer reviews. The only reward from the consumer reviews is if you're lucky, you can get a whole bunch of them. So, and, oh, this is, this is just a little thing I was talking with one of the authors today about how we actually get reviews considering a lot of people just don't write reviews. So, oops, I went too far, too fast there, but yeah. Uh, Author can write a book, and there's a small chance that someone will read it and write the review just because they read the book. But a lot of times, authors have to ask for those reviews. Like, if you're on social media, if you have a blog or something like, 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 like I do, I have to remind my readers, like, oh, hey, if you read that book and you liked it, go ahead and write a review. Like, I have to ask people to write reviews, and sometimes they do. <clears throat> um, sometimes authors have to do a little bit more. They have to do, like, a blog tour or a book tour where they go around to libraries and bookstores and talk about their book to get people interested in it. Again, trying to get that crowd feeling and build buzz. And so a blog tour or a book tour will do that for them. And the last thing that authors will sometimes do, hoping to get a review, is to give their book away. Authors don't like giving their book away. Sometimes we do. We want to share our stories, so we're willing to put it out there just to get that feedback. 
Um, most authors in this day and age aren't necessarily writing for fame and fortune. Do we want it? Oh yeah. But that's not why we're writing. We're writing it to make a connection. So sometimes we're willing to give away an ebook or you know an art copy to get that feedback from the readers. Oh, and then again, yeah, sometimes they host giveaways that are related to the book and not the book itself. And that's usually something that's for the fans. I have an author that I love. I follow her all the time. And I've read all of her books and I bought all of her books. So she does giveaways that are related to her books. And so I always enter those and sometimes I want to do cool stuff. It's fun. So here's why you should write book reviews. Just because you can. I mean, there's so many restrictions on things these days that the, if you have an opportunity to do something just because you can, why not give it a try? Um, it's an opportunity to reflect. A lot of times when I read a book and as soon as I put it down, I'm thinking, oh, I hated that book or, oh, I love that book. But then after I sit down to actually write the review, if it reflects, I began to think, you know what, I didn't like this book, but there was a good point mentioned in chapter two. So I might put that in my review. Writing a review gives you an opportunity for, to reflect on your whole reading experience. It's an exercise in free speech. I mean, we live in a free country, but people don't always take an opportunity to express what they think or feel because it can be very intimidating. But that's one thing that I really like about book reviews. I can read a, a book that has a maybe a message behind it, and if I leave a positive review, people can associate, oh, she agrees with the message of that book, and vice versa. If I read a book and I don't like the message, they can associate that negative review with, oh, she does not agree with that. So it is an actual exercise in free speech that I think all readers and it perpetuates the writing cycle. As I mentioned before, most authors these days are not writing for fame and fortune. So giving feedback is like, it's hard to describe it. If you've ever done something, if you've baked a cake or if you've sewn a dress, if you've created something and then someone completely ignored it, didn't notice it, it kind of brings you down. So every now and then, it's nice to get feedback from readers to keep you motivated to keep creating. So reading reviews perpetuates the writing cycle. And it gives you a chance to be part of something bigger. I have met so many people who've connected with larger communities through the books that they've read, and it becomes part of like their fandom, you know? And just like people connect to sports teams and movies, you can do the same thing with books, especially since most movies now are derived from books to begin with. Alright, so now here's where we get into the nitty gritty of actually writing reviews. We're going to talk about some of the different types of book reviews you can write. The first one is the one liner. Usually, you give a star rating, and then you give one line saying, I loved this book, or I didn't love this book. Um, you might even say something like, this book was fun, I loved it, or this book was boring, I didn't love it. And so the one-liner is short and sweet, and it gives the minimal amount of feedback, but it's still something to grab onto. Then there's the short and sweet. This is one of my favorite. I've seen a lot of um, reviews like this where the reader kind of summarizes what they feel like the whole book was about in like one line. I'll give you an example. This book is Jane Austen meets Sherlock Holmes in 1990s Florida. This was a fun book and I loved it. That was the whole review. But I feel like there's so much in that. That's a short and sweet review. So that's another one to try. Then there's the comprehensive review. It's very similar to short and sweet, only there's a few more sentences thrown in there. Um, there's usually a sentence that explains what the book's about, there's a sentence explaining um, how the plot developed, and then a sentence or two about why the person liked the book. So if you don't see as many of those, um, short and sweet, you see a lot of those. Next is comprehensive and critical. This is actually the one you see um, the most after the short and with the comprehensive and critical. This is for people like me, because I've gotten to the point where I read so many reviews and have written so many books that when I sit down to write my review, I have so much to say. 
And so these are a little bit longer. They're a couple of paragraphs, but they're not like books, you know? So these are, um, I call them comprehensive and critical because usually these tell you something about the imagery in the book. If there's imagery, if there's a political message, it tells you something about, you know, the persuasive message behind it. So that, that's what, these two are the most common ones you see. And then the last one is long for no reason. <laughs> Sometimes you find someone who really got into a book, either they love it or they hate it, and they want to tell you every single thing about it. And this is basically a critique that no one asked for. If that's your jam, then go for it. Write that review. You just may not get a lot of other people reading it. So, <laughs> and so here are some tips on actually how to write <clears throat> So the first thing you want to do is acquire a book and read it. And I say legally because that's an issue. You can rent a book from a library, you can buy one from a store, whether in person or online, you can borrow one from a friend. But the first thing you want to do is actually get a book. I find that some people want to review books that they haven't actually read. And I'm like, that makes no sense. You can't go somewhere and read the back of the book and be like, okay, I'm ready to review it. You haven't read that book. So make sure you acquire a book and read it. Make the decision to actually write your review. A lot of times we get caught up in that reading experience as soon as we know what we want to pick up the next. So make the decision to actually write your review. And then choose your format. Just like in the last slide where I talked about the different types of reviews, you choose what you want to do. You may not be comfortable yet writing a comprehensive review, but you could do something short and sweet. Maybe you were not even there yet. Maybe you just want to do the one liner and run away. Whatever works for you, but you choose your format that you're comfortable with. And then decide where you're going to post that review. You can post the same review in multiple places to spread your opinion as far as wide as possible. I post a lot of my reviews on Amazon.com, Goodreads.com. I post them on my blog since I have a blog. But you can post book reviews anywhere. You can write them on postcards and send them to friends. You can put, write a book review wherever you want. Just make sure you share it somewhere. Oh yeah, and then that was the next one, is to share the review. So, and here are some few writing tips. You want to be honest with your reviews, but don't be hateful. Sometimes when you're being honest, people's feelings might get hurt, but being hurtful and hateful are two different things. If your book review involves any type of threat, that's a hateful review. Take a step back and reevaluate. Have fun and be creative. Um, I've seen people post reviews online and they like have like four or five different gifs or gifs on there <laughs> kind of expressing their different opinions. I'm not that kind of reviewer, but maybe you are. You can be creative and expressive with these book reviews. Um, again, be critical but not judgmental. If you read a book and you're like, the grammar in this book is terrible. Well, instead of saying that in the review, explain that this person needs to tighten up their common usage, um, the prepositions are not, like being critical, don't just say the, the grammar is terrible. So think about that when you're writing your review. And oh yeah, don't respond to other people's reviews. That's like the worst thing you can do. You might, people might start looking for you on social media or responding to other people's reviews. So don't do that. And then the biggest tip for writing a book review is to read books that you are comfortable with. If you already know that you are not into dragons, don't read a dragon book because you're probably going to give it a one star. But if you're willing to try something different, mention that in your review because it'll make a difference. I was just telling one of the other authors today that I'm just now getting into romance. So if I read a romance book and I don't love it, I mentioned in my review, you know, I'm new to this genre, so that way when another reader comes across it, they can take that into consideration. All right, so that's pretty much the end of the presentation. This presentation is based on my new book that I've been trying to publish for a whole month, and I just published it last night, so it is online, but I don't have it today. It is called Ain't Nobody Got Time for Book Reviews. And these are some of the other things that I cover in the book that I did cover in the presentation. So if you are interested in um, looking that up, please consider doing so. And um, thank you.